Hello, this is channel Easy Self Host. In this video, we're going to talk about how to host a VPN service on the cloud to protect your self-hosted services that you don't want to expose to the public internet. In my hosting on the cloud video, I mentioned that we could improve the data security of our self-hosting experience. One was that we didn't use HTTPS to secure the initial setup for our proxy admin page. Another thing is that we weren't supposed to expose any admin services to the public internet because people could just brute force your credential and control all your admin services. Setting up a VPN service can solve both issues. A VPN creates an encrypted tunnel between you and your server that even unencrypted data can be passed. And you can choose to expose some services only to the VPN tunnel so no one else can access the services. We are going to use WireGuard VPN. It is very popular and easy to set up. Let's get started to set up a VPN. First, let's create the server you want to self-host your web services. You don't have to use AWS, I'm just using it as an example. We are going to use Ubuntu and the basic machine type on AWS. Let's enable HTTP and HTTPS for the services that we do want to expose to the internet. Then launch the instance and wait for it to be ready. Let's use the connect feature on AWS to connect to our server. You can also just use the SSH command line. Now we start to set up our VPN. First, we run app update to update the package manager. Then we run app install WireGuard to install WireGuard. After the software is installed, we need to set up the encryption keys. WireGuard relies on two pairs of keys to encrypt the messages, and they need to know each other's public key to identify them. Let's first set up the keys on the server. First, let's use this command to generate a private key and store it in the WireGuard directory. The command will also show the key string. Then, let's use this command to make sure no one else can access the private key. 400 means only the root user on this server can read the key. Then let's generate the public key, which is derived from the private key. This is a very long command to type, and it will also show the public key content. If you ever need to show the keys again, you can use the command sudo cat etc wireguard public or private dot key. After this, we can write our VPN configuration. Let's copy our private key and use the nano editor to edit the configuration. We name it wg0.conf. In the nano editor, you can start typing the following content. First is our private key. And then we need to assign a virtual IP address to the VPN. There are many IP ranges you can choose. I'm using 10.1.1.1/24. And then we need to assign a port to the VPN service. It's common to use the value 51820. The last line we need is save config equals true. To save and exit editor, press Ctrl X, then Y for yes, and then press Enter key. Back to the command line, we can quickly use the cat command to check the content of our configuration. Now we can use this systemctl command to enable our VPN service. And we need another systemctl command to start the service. There is also a status command to check if the service is running. Now the WireGuard VPN service is up and running on our cloud server. Then let's set up the VPN client on our personal computer. You can download the client software on the WireGuard website. I'm using the Mac version, but the configuration steps are the same. Let's first copy the public key on the server. And then we open the client software and hit add an empty tunnel. This will automatically generate a pair of keys for the client. Like on the server, we also need to write the configuration. First is the virtual IP address. Here we use the address 10.1.1.2/24, which is a different address to the server. Then we need to define the peer, which is the server. First, we need to paste the public key of the server here. Then we need to allow the IP ranges 10.1.1.0/24. For the next field, we need the real public IP address of the server to define the endpoint. We can find the public IP address of the server on the AWS instance page. Back to the client software, we paste the IP address with the port 51820. Now we can create the VPN tunnel. Let's enable the VPN on the client and copy its public key to use it in the server. Back to the server command line, 
Let's use this command to set the client public key and its IP address. Make sure to use the virtual IP address you assign instead of the real IP address. Here, we use the address 10.1.1.2. The last thing we need to set up on the server is to enable port 51820 on AWS. Let's go to the server security group setup and add an inbound rule of UDP port 51820 and allow it to be connected from any IP address. With the security group setup, we can now go to the client software and click activate to enable the VPN service. To test the VPN connection, we can use the ping command on our personal computer to ping the IP address we set up for the VPN server. And this result shows that we already connect to our VPN server. Now let's host some web services to show how this VPN can protect our self-hosting. The steps are the same as my past video. First, we install Docker. Then we use VS Code to connect your remote server to write some Docker Compose configuration. With the VPN connected, we can use the IP address we assigned instead of the public IP address. Now the VS Code will start to edit files on the server. This Docker Compose file is exactly the same like last time. For the Nginx Proxy Manager, we don't want to expose the admin port 81 to the public internet, so we can only expose it to our VPN IP address. Back to our server command line, let's find our docker compose file and bring up the services using docker compose app. With the services running, we can now go to the browser. Use the VPN IP address and port 81, we can go to the Nginx proxy manager. Now, although we are using plain HTTP protocol, our connection is encrypted and no one else can access the endpoint. Optionally, you can also disable the SSH port in your security group setup because we can connect the server SSH using the VPN tunnel. But this way you lose the SSH access using AWS console. You can now only use the native SSH client and connect to your VPN peer address. That's all for this video. Please consider subscribing for content like this. You can find the Docker Compose file on GitHub and the link is in description below. Thank you for watching.